Hello, everyone. You are listening to the inaugural. Did I say that right, MJ? The inaugural episode of the X's and O's podcast. I'm Dean McDermott, and with me, Dean. Can I just tell you that that's the wrong title for our podcast? It's, it's X's, X's and O's. Uh O's. Uh O's. Uh O's. Uh O's. Did I not uh-ohs. say uh O's? No, you said uh O's. Okay, je m'excuse. Okay, you are listening sorry. to the inaugural podcast of X's and Uh O's. He said it again. Me. It's Uh O's. U H O H. Uh O's. That's it. I want a divorce. Uh-oh. I want a divorce. We are divorced. <laughs> Can I get through the intro at least? Sorry. Like, just go. Put it back go. in your Sorry. pants. Mary okay. Jo. All Sorry. right. This is okay. This is our first episode of X's and Uh O's. Good man. I'm your Perfect. host, Dean McDermott, and with me is my ex-wife, Mary Jo Eustace. Mary Jo, how are you? Lovely ex-wife, please. Lovely, lovely ex-wife. ex and single ex single. You single. are my it's a sh- single ex-wife. And that's a shocker after listening to the first two minutes of this podcast, isn't it? Know, it's shocking. I'm still single. Well, How you know, what's, you know, what's really shocking is that we are in the same room. We are. Well, we're not in the same room. We're in the same apartment building. We had to, we, put, are. we had to sequester Mary Jo to the bedroom because she was echoing and yes. I'm here in her dining room, which is amazing that there's no bloodshed. No bloodshed. Yeah. We Nothing. haven't, yeah, we're under one roof. We haven't called each other nasty names. No. And, you know, I think that speaks to what this show is all about. I think that that's a really excellent point. And yes. I think the whole point of X's and uh O's exclamation mark is, you know, we want to set a new template. That's what we're trying to do, Dino. We want yeah. to set a new template yeah. for this sort of experience and coming together at the end of the day and being friends. And we're friends yes. again. We're friends. Divorce. We are friends. We are friends. And, you know, divorce is messy and ugly. And, you know, this show is not about getting into the nitty gritty, gr- nasty stuff, but the positivities that you can take away from a divorce. Now, we've been divorced for 18 years. So that's a long time. And we weren't friends right out of the gate. 17 years. It's we've 17 years. 17. Okay. It's so, 17 years. We've been sorry, divorced 17 that would years. A, that would add a year onto your age. So yeah. That, and how can I just be 39? I would have to be 40. So that would yeah, be a problem. That makes total sense. You're really good with math. <laughs> Thank you. Seth. I really did well in it. And you know, here's the thing that, you know, my name's Mary Jo and I am Canadian. And at one point in time, I was married to this man, Dean McDermott. We were a couple for 13 years. Right, Dean? I thought it was 12. But again, like I said, oh, you're better at math my God. than me. I it's, thought it was 12. Was no, it 13? 13 years. Okay. 13 years, honey. It was okay. 13 again. of the best years of your life. She you called know, me before. honey. You I called you honey. honey. I called you sweet. sweetie. Um, <laughs> and, you know, Dean was a bit of my boy toy because he was like um, three or four years younger than me when we met. And uh, he, w- I was going to say he was, I was going to, you know, no, Dean, four years. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say he was hot. He was super I was. hot. And I, I don't like saying was because you are still, this is going to kill me, a very attractive man. You're just saying that because we're doing a show together. I am. That's and true. I'm but in the no. next room. <laughs> yeah. And I'm scared. Um, no, you, you, you are. And I think that the, the way that we wanted to start this uh, podcast, aside from me admonishing Dean for getting the title wrong and the years of our marriage and my age, because I want to put that aside. Um, we age really is just to, a number, Mary Jo. It is just, just a, a number. number, especially in L.A., um, and I wanted to talk about, I thought it would be a really good trajectory if we started from a really positive place of how we met each other and why we fell madly in love with each other. Well, you fell madly in love with me. So go ahead. Well, the floor is yours. That's, yeah, that's, that is because, you know, we're kind of, this is a free form show. So we kind of didn't know what we're going to talk about. So I yeah. think that's an excellent You're wearing place. pants, aren't you? You are wearing pants. I am wearing, wearing pants, pants. Yes, okay. yes. If I were at home, I, I wouldn't be wearing pants, but I'm wearing be pantless. pants okay. to, in, in, you know. For respect for you. Thank you. Um, but uh, it is interesting how we met. Um, Vodka. I Vodka. was, oh yeah, and today's, uh, our sponsor for the show is water because we don't have a sponsor yet. So we don't, anybody not yet, out but there we ex- listening, yeah, we, we need cocktails. Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds, we're Canadian. Give us some oh, alcohol yeah, some for gin, episode right? two. He's got yeah, some great yeah. gin. Yeah. Ryan, get good. us some gin, eh? Okay. So go back Loosens to the screws how I, at the back of the tongue. Go, go back to how okay, you thought so, I was super um, hot. I was uh, my very first agent in Toronto, David Karnick, God rest his soul. Yeah. Um, 
I used to I used to live on the same street as him. So I'd stop by once in a while just to say hi. And I saw this beautiful woman's headshot sitting on his desk. I was like, wow, who's that? And Who he's like, it? that's Mary Jo Stryker. And I'm like, wow, she's beautiful. It was your headshot. You were wearing that white and navy blue striped. Can we just do a quick footnote here? I don't want to hijack on the your striker. Story. Yeah. Tell, yeah. Oh, tell, our, tell our that. viewers, tell our viewers yeah. why it was called Stryker. So okay. uh, David uh, thought that Mary Jo Eustace was, you know, maybe a difficult last name to pronounce for casting directors and producers and whatnot. Eustache, Eustache, Eustace, whatever. So he came up with a stage name uh, based on his favorite porn star, which was Jeff yeah. Stryker. So that is how Mary Jo Stryker was born. Uh, True. It was born. She was born out of porn. Yeah, I was. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. And that's a but that's a great stage name, Stryker. It is a good like, stage name. I Dean guess. Dean Stryker. Dean Stryker is a good like Stryker. It's very it's a good masculine. Last name. Yes, it, it is. It's very cock oriented. You can tell that that was the impetus behind it. Can you? And it and it and yes, but and it fits your personality. I'm going to take that as a compliment. Be, yeah. Because I remember, oh gosh, I remember one therapist saying if you were a dude, you'd be a beer drinking, motorcycle riding football player. I can't, I told you so, uh, yes, you knew that. And <laughs> and I just, that? yeah, yeah, that's what he said to me. Yeah. It, isn't that interesting? And did you, did you stop seeing that therapist? Uh, actually, what happened is he got arrested for improper violations against his clients. And I never saw him again shortly okay. after well, that session. He wasn't the best therapist. No. But he well, that's, right on that, that. yeah, well, I'm glad, yeah. I'm glad he's in his place because that he didn't sound good he wasn't you know positive reinforcement yeah. okay but you so have you a very me. strong you have a very strong personality anywho i do Any so hooey. i i see the the head the, the headshot on his desk and he tells me it's mary joe striker and lo and behold who walks through the door of the agency mary but joe mary joe striker and i was like uh blah, 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 blah. i just like was an idiot and she was like uh whatever um couldn't you know she was very nonplussed with me. Yes. Um, and then I think it was two or three years later, I was doing security at uh, an event. Where was that? Was it in City Hall? It was in Toronto. It was in Toronto. Was it? I think it was in Toronto City Hall or something. So I was yeah, doing yeah. security and Mary Jo shows up with no tickets. She was supposed to meet her brother and his friends who were trash drunk. Uh, and they kind of just left her and she pleaded her case with me. And of course, I was, I was still like very smitten with her. Uh, I was like, please go in if you need any help finding your brother, da, 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 whatever. So hour or so goes by. I go upstairs to get a drink and I run into Mary Jo, who still hasn't found her brother. No. Um, and I said to her, I said, hey, I don't know if you remember this, but I met you at David Karnick's office. Um, we were represented by David and um, I met you that uh, one day and I've been in love with you ever since. And she was true. like, and she was like, Oh really talk to me. So <laughs> we ended up talking, like I abandoned my security post. Um, it's true. And uh, it's I true. ended up, we ended up talking for a couple of hours and we talked for a couple of hours and, you and know, I, I found your it... brother who was trashed. He, he, right. He was yeah. like blackout drunk and uh, uh, nice. And, yeah. And you Hope left you're missing, Michael. and you left and Helen Tanzi, who does um, uh, the, the, oh, a podcast. the podcast, what's it called? Yeah. Feminine Warrior, Feminine Warrior. The, yeah. um, she was there and she was like, you idiot. I'm like, what? He's like, you just let her walk away. She likes you. And she said, you know, get her number. So I managed to get her number through David Karnick. So, and then I called her and then we went out. Remember we played pool at the Rivoli. On that, first that's date. what happened but that yep. but that night i was sort of gunning for maybe a connection but you were a bit clueless and then this is super, I, I was super a little sweet. bit you were I, you were because you were so nervous and starstruck really being in my presence <laughs> so you really couldn't focus and um well to be honest like if a girl came up to me then with her tits out i wouldn't know that she's attracted to me like i was just a kind of like nice guy mm -hmm. Yeah. Couldn't see the forest for the trees kind yeah, of thing, yeah. you know? Yeah, but, but anyway, you had you a pretty can, good, you, you, you had a pretty, you had a pretty good track record with the ladies. <laughs> Dean was known as very friendly. You were yes. a very friendly, equal opportunity person. I, which yes. I love about you. Yes, yes. In your younger years. That's I mean, me in a nutshell. Yeah. 
And now I'm just old and gray. We're being authentic and true here. So that yes. is true. And then Which what is happened, the basis of the show, authenticity It is the basis of the show. And by the way, what we're also striving to do during this process when we, we go through this stuff is to learn as we do it and learn more about each other as we mm. go. So we're going through the process with our listeners um, at the same time, which I think is super, super cool. So then Dean sent me a beautiful little card to my workplace and sent me flowers and said and asked me on a date. Los Select Bistro. That's uh, right. Right. Yeah. That's how I, that's yes. That's yeah. how I tracked you down. Yeah. You tracked me down that way. And it was all very chaste and innocent for quite a while. And we just hung out together. So that's our moment in time. I'll remember that whole okay. first time when we met. You want to say something? I'm going to throw, I'm going to throw it back to you. Uh -oh. Do you remember the conversation you had with your mom? Um, I had, remember I had a commercial on the air. Oh yes, I do. I right? do. So do you want explain. me to share that? Share that, please. Yes. Since okay. We're so, authentic uh, and truthful. okay. We are being authentic. And I love that we're, you know, Oprah would be so proud of us. We're starting from this positive germ of when our relationship came together, you know, and this was, Dean, if I'm correct, this was 30 years ago. This was 30 yeah. years ago. Yeah. Again, with okay. the math. I'm so glad yeah, I know, that we're honey. doing this show I know. together just for the I math know. alone. Take, take out your iPhone. But really, <laughs> 17 years, apparently, I you're, you've you been married to somebody else. I Don't quote me, but I think that you're yes. remarried. And then yes. we were married yes. for 13 years. So that's 30 years. That's 30 years. So yeah. this was 30 wow. years ago. And there was a commercial on um, TV um, for Bell Canada and Tom yeah. Cavanaugh, if you're listening, Tom Cavanaugh is a huge star right now. I know, I know he right? blew up. Yeah. We yeah. love Tommy Cavanaugh and he might've even been in it. I don't know, but we used to always, he was, he was, he was my best friend seeing me off to college. Yeah. So we would recreate this commercial all the time with Dean, but basically Dean was <laughs> totally smoking hot, wearing a tight t-shirt and jeans. And the whole premise of the commercial was that he was going to be going away and his girlfriend was devastated, as she should be. Tori and Higginson. Tori Higginson, and she did mm -hmm. well, too. And then I think they put her on a box because you were so tall. Anyway, so <laughs> she was crying and everything. And then she said, oh, my God, oh, my God, I'm going to miss you so much. And she said, will you call? And Dean just kept saying, I'll call. I'll call. And he became known as the bell guy. Who would and call? And she said, you sure you'll call? And, and I you said, said, every day. Is that what you said? Yeah. Every oh, that's a, that, that, that's a panty wetter. That's nice. Yeah, Say it again. Yeah. Say it again for our viewers. Every day. Oh yeah. 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 I see why I'm, I, I mean, I'm, I'm moist. I mean, are you, are you aroused in the <laughs> I, other room? I have, yeah. I haven't uttered that word in such yeah. a long time. Yeah. Oh my God. That's right. Yeah. That's what so you said. You and, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I must've fallen asleep to that every night, hoping and praying that I would run into the bell guy. And he would say to me what you just said, which was. I'll call every, every day. day. Yeah. And you told your mom that you're like, I want yeah. to meet a guy like that. Yeah, I might, I might have even have said I want to marry the the bell guy. So I just want to put a pin in this for our listeners. And do you love how I put an S on listener? <laughs> like we have more than one. I want to put a pin on this it's just because a matter of time. because it's amazing. And you know, Dean and I, and this is true and authentic, have done a lot of work, in, especially mm -hmm. in these last seventeen years. I'm yes. I'm full on healing therapy mode right now. It's just I'm loving it. And I know Dean is too. I and need a therapist. Yeah. Oh, you do need another one. <laughs> Did you get fired again? No, Honey? I've got one. I'm kidding. I'm okay, kidding. Okay. I get, yeah. Uh, but a lot of self-reflection and a lot of work and stuff, but it is amazing what happens when you start from a positive place, right? When you mm -hmm. actually recreate mm -hmm. the feelings, like I, all of that stuff came back to me. I remembered it all. Yeah. And it was 30 years ago. It, I can't believe it's been 30 years. Yeah. And like I said earlier, you know, divorce is ugly and nasty and it would be so nice if it weren't. But a lot of the times, you know, it, it starts off, you know, from, a, from a negative place where, you know, the relationship is, is just gone South. Uh, you, you don't connect with each other anymore. Or, you know, in my case, I left Mary Jo for another woman. Um, Unbelievable still and, to this day. <laughs> and so it, it's, it's really, I mean, we have to unfold all this. This yes, is, there's yes, a lot, we will. To, we'll, lot to talk we've about. Got all these episodes but coming up how, about that. Yeah. How nice would it be or how nice would it have been if, you know, we had someone who had gone through a divorce in this same kind of scenario or just divorce in general that could kind of help us along? 
because, you know, like I said, we, we weren't always friends. You know, I, uh, I, I, I blocked you for like two years on my phone, you know, like we really, we went through it and here we are, you know, 17 years later and we're, we're friends and we're in each other's lives. So it'd be so nice if it would be great if we had to cut that time in half. Because, you know, you look at it and especially, you know, we, we share children. So it would have been, it would have been a lot better for us, but it also would have been so much better for the kids. Right. And I do think too, that we're humans and we're human beings and emotional and there's a process. And I think that, um, you know, I did write a bestseller called Divorce Sucks and, um, you know, didn't read it. Didn't read it. You Didn't were in it, it once or twice. I, I know. <laughs> my, can I get an autograph copy now? Or order it on Amazon. Um, <laughs> Will you sign it? <laughs> one day delivery. I might. Um, so, um, you know, 50, 60% of the population is divorced. And then remarriages, sorry to say, this is about a 70% divorce rate. So it's an epidemic, you know. And yeah. I think it's really hard when you're in it to see the other person as a human being. And, you know, and I, I always make this a, equation. Um, you know, when people are like, oh, it must have been so hard for you that your um, divorce played out in the media. And there was aspects of it that were horrific. But I also think even if it's in a small town, it's in the t- town square, right? Because right, your right. friends know, your family know, it's like your personal life implodes. Everybody's got their opinion on it. And it just, it's a dismantling of your family, of how you identify, you mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. it's its a process. It's a grieving to heal from it. Um you know, and, and to your point, I think the more examples, because we've had a horrendous road, mm-hmm. um, and if we can come through it, and we're, we're certainly, you know, you know uh, if we can do it, anybody can do it, I think. <laughs> yes. Right? That's our motto. Hashtag, that, if we can do it, anybody can do it. If, if these idiots can do it. Right. Anybody can Anybody do it. Can. And we, we had so many extenuating circumstances around it too um, that made it particularly difficult, you know, and this circles back to why we're so interested in doing this show is because we would, you know, um, ha- love to have this new movement yeah. of being able to be friends um, and have your ex spouse or partner in your life in a healthy way. You yeah. know, and it's a journey, but I think it's really essential. I think so too. And, you know, there, there are the exceptions to the rule where people are divorced and they're, you know, still best friends. And, and especially if there's kids involved, I, I know a couple that, uh, what's it, is it called nesting when they're divorced? Oh yeah. They, they go in and out. They just, go in and out. Yeah. For yeah, the yeah, kids. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that was really interesting. We should do a show on that. That would mm-hmm. be really interesting. Um, but it, um, Oh, I lost my point, Mary Jo. I had a senior moment. I lost my point. I wrote down uh, nesting on my notes. Uh, but you were saying that your 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 couple got along. They were friends. They were best. They friends. got along. Yes, 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 yes. So you know, yes, there, yes. that does happen. You know, it's 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 rare. It's, it's rare. The exception, not the rule. But you know, um, if we can help in any way, that would be great. Because I like looking back, and you know, here we are now in a great place. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, how great would it have been if if it was less than seventeen years? It was like if it was 10, 10 or eight or five, you know, like, yeah, yeah. We just kind of, yeah. we wasted a lot of time and growth disliking each other for, for what? Cause here we are in the end friends together, together. Yeah. And it's for, interesting. For just, just to prove that we are in the same place. I'm in my bedroom and this is where it all happens. Notice like the black paint. Here he is. Here he is. Hi, here. we're here. And we haven't killed each other. Not yet. Not, not yet. This is our first episode, but you never know. Yeah. Hopefully it, there'll be a second episode, but I just want to prove to everybody. We're together. This is for our Friends. listeners. Our listeners, there's Friends. an S. Friends. Don't pat the hair. Watch the hair. Go into the Watch other room. Babies. Watch it. Um, so really that is the premise of the show. And we were like, we've been thinking about doing this for, for quite a, uh, a long time. And uh, Brad Pitt and Gwyneth Paltrow just did a really cool show about, you know, how they're friends after their relationship, you know, and it can be long-term partners or marriages or divorces. And, you know, especially at graduation time, like these blended families have to show up and be together. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, so there's, it's such a fascination to me that somebody you have kids with and this a life with, and then you cut them off um, Mm -hmm. and they're not part of your life. And um, there's got to be a better way. 
there's yeah. got to be a better way. Yeah. Um, because yeah, you, you hit it on the head, cut it off. It's just so severe. Like it just, you just went from, from being together to just completely isolated. And then if there's hard feelings in there, you just feel like, you know, you've just severed this person from your life forever. And there's zero connection. Even if you have, like we did, we have kids that just felt like there was zero connection. Yeah. And we'll talk about that. So we'll I want, so, yeah, so we're going to so talk about it. And um, the thing that you want, okay. So we wanted to both say, you wanted me to ask you why you wanted to do this podcast. Hmm. Remember you wanted me yes, to ask you Yes. And I wanted to ask you, I was going to put it right back in your court too. Okay. But I, ask you I, first. I think, thank you, Mary Jo. Um, I think, I think that we've, we've kind of covered it, you know, like I, I really want to do this show one, because we've always had a great rapport and chemistry and funny together. So I thought one, that's, that's great. But the, the big picture is to highlight and show people that you can be friends with your ex and be in their life. And not just for, you know, the graduations and, and the Christmases and stuff, but like you can, you stay in touch and, you know, communicate and say, Hey, how you doing? So I'd like to, for me, if it's possible to help people reduce that time, you know, I always look at the analogy as a parent, you want to protect your kids and, you know, they're going to put their hand on the hot stove. And as much as you try to tell them not to do it, they're going to do it. That's just human nature. But if we can intervene and direct them away from, you know, putting their hand on the hot stove or, you know, staying away from negativity or hating your ex, that would be great. So, you know, I would love to help people navigate this and, and get to the finish point where we're at sooner. Oh my God. That was a good answer. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just doing it. You're to just curb my, I'm just doing it to curb my drinking. Cause I feel at least if I have some <laughs> social contact, it gives her something um, to do during the day. It gives me something uh, to do during the day. Um, yeah, I'm just, yeah, I agreed. And I'm just interested in exploring that whole world. I know like we have somebody, a world-renowned producer producing us, world-renowned in Canada. And rumor has it he's been through a divorce. I mean, really? everybody's been through a divorce, oh, yeah? Yeah. I mean, well, all- it, especially in LA, you can't swing a dead cat without hitting right, it, someone right. who's divorced. Right. And everybody's fascinated by it. And, um, you know, so I'm so glad that we can... Um, delve into that. And I'm interested in going through the stages of it too and helping each other, like kind of like reliving it a little, helping each right. other, you know, talk it through. We want to have guests on, like people yes. who have had explosive blow ups and, and part it ways and then come back together. We want to maybe do that. Reu- reunite, not in marriage, but reunite like a right. friendship. Yeah. Right, right. And find out and, and um, you know, why it works and why it doesn't. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's so many avenues to go with that. And, and what, they've, what they've learned through divorce. Right. You know, about themselves. Hey, you know what? We should get ordained just do, in case. Just in weddings? case. Just to do in remarriages? Case, yes. Someone wants to get remarried on the show. Okay. I'm thinking I'm big picture. I'm thinking okay. down the road. Is there, is there any sort of, you know, like monetary exchange in that? Or is, are we doing it out of the goodwill of our hearts? To, the first couple just to get yeah. notoriety. Yeah. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll okay. do freebies and then, okay. you know, then, then we'll, we'll start then we'll to charge. charge. Okay, good. Then we'll have t-shirts, and everything. <laughs> t-shirts. Um, yeah. So I think that, I think that, you know, we're really coming from a place of, I, I think I can speak for myself that the, the 17 years and, you know, I've been um, a lone parent um, and what it's done to my life. And I would say this, and I would say this, honestly, mm-hmm. it's made me a better person. Mm-hmm. going through the divorce, a, a stronger person, more empathetic person, um, you know, everything, like every range of emotion, but um, I don't regret it. I don't regret it. So I learned so much through it, you know, good, bad, and indifferent. Yeah. Well, I, I, uh, I agree with what you just said. I've, I've noticed that change in you especially now, because we've been in each other's lives for a little bit now. Um, yeah. And I've seen how, how strong uh, you become because of it and empathetic. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I have six kids. I, I couldn't imagine raising one solo, let alone two. Yeah. And you did an amazing job. Oh, thank you. And, and I, thank you. 
that's the one thing that that I've learned from from divorce is you know looking back and putting my empathizing with you, putting myself in your situation, and I was just like I couldn't I couldn't imagine how the struggles um, to being a single parent to two children. Like you know, I had Jack on the weekends and whatnot, whatever we, you know, we finally worked out a week on week off, whatever. Um, but yeah, being a single parent is huge. There's a great comedian, Josh Wolf, and he's a single dad and, you know, he's out there doing stand up at night, slugging it out. And he's a, and he's a dad during the day. Like, it's just amazing. So just looking back and seeing what you went through and how you raised uh, the two kids, it, it, kudos to you, like really well done, hard job, and you nailed it. Wow. That's the first time you've ever said that to me. That means so much to me. Thank you. And You're welcome. I was, and I mean every you. word of it. I no, really I do. know you do. I, really I know do. you do. And I was speaking to my friend, Rebecca, this morning, Rebecca Rankin, who I love. She's Canadian. And she just has, she's got a clusterfuck right now. She's got to deal with, she's a single mom that, you know, she just got home from a vacation. She's on a plane 12 hours later because her son has some weird staph infection and she's single oh, parent, geez. covers everything. Right. Um, you know, and being, and the single mom thing, and, you know, we've talked about this before and maybe it's a solo parent, but it's such a pejorative term, like, you know, we're haggard and, but we are haggard, but my single mom motto is my most profound moment. Duh as a single mom is with a plunger. That's all I did is plunge <laughs> toilets with two kids, especially that's all I did all yeah. the time. Every piece of crap grunt work, the toilets, <laughs> the barf, like, you know, yeah. I got to be a bit of an electrician because, you know, one of the most, the proudest thing that I'm, that and I want to say this, I think this is really important. One of the proudest things I did after my divorce is I bought my own home. I bought a beautiful home. I still own yeah. it. Yeah. And I want to say that a part of the reason I worked really hard after a divorce, I was successful back then. Um, <laughs> one of the home. reasons, yeah, we were. And one of the reasons I was able to buy this home, which is tripled in value and has become, you know, is because you did not take the proceeds from our house. You gave it to me in the divorce. Yeah. yeah. You gave yeah. me that footing, yeah. which was major that I could turn around and do that. And that's been, you know, always as a woman, I w if you can own property and real estate, own it. And so yeah, I bought that absolutely. in 2009. I give that advice to anybody. Yeah. Right yeah. Now. And kudos for you. So yeah. So that, well, that thank you. Yeah. But being a single mom is not for the faint of heart. No. A lot of yeah. firsts here today. Yeah. yeah. That was the first, that was the first yeah. you ever, you ever you made did. note of that and, and thank you, you for it. So thank you. Thank you. You did. You did. But, uh, and when, and, and when I sell that, you won't get a penny, but you did. You gave well, that. I, well, it depends on where we're at. I might come after a little bit, but just a little just bit. A little bit. Just, just a little just, bit. Just a little bit. But no, you yeah. know what? And there's something we should get into too down the road too is the financing of it all. Like you played it really yeah. smart. Like, you know, you had something to work with and you parlayed it into something great. It was very important to me uh, to be able to do that. And it was my dream house that I bought. And I love that house. And I actually, you know, rent it out now and it's, you know, uh, creating equity and these right. are other things. It's a great house. About. It's a great house. Yeah. I love it. So that is absolutely, um, is absolutely huge. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, there's so much to talk about. There is. Uh, and I think I love this. This is kind of like a, just a, a jam session. Like we're flushing out a lot of great things and I don't know if the listeners are going to like it or not, but you know, I think, uh, I hope we've entertained you a little bit and given you a little bit of insight, but I think this has been great for us mm -hmm. just creatively. It's been wonderful. Well, there's, there's a couple of things. First of all, um, what, okay. Should I, so should first I make, of all, should I make notes? Just make some notes. Okay, I make some notes. First, first of all, okay, this is a problem when you're a senior, you do forget. Oh, okay. <laughs> first of all, what we're going to do every show is we're going to highlight a divorce that happened around the time we're doing our show. And today yes. we looked do we up. Have one? A, do we have one today? A big one. Liza on Minnelli, me. Liza Minnelli and David Guest oh, got, a, dear. got divorced. This yeah. month, what year? Remember? Oh, gosh, 2007? 2007. Okay. And, and he, how did it go? Was it, was it amicable? It was, no, was it nasty? Was I'll tell you, he, David Guest said that Liza gave him herpes. So no. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. He said that. So wow. not a good divorce maybe. Yeah. But, but isn't it when you have herpes, you always have herpes, right? So, yeah. So what is a blessing? So, 
No, it's not a no. It's a curse. But yeah, I don't. I don't think she might have given it to David maliciously. It's if it's in your system and you have a flare up. It's just like <laughs> sorry. Okay, that's very medical. Okay, the point is <laughs> anyway. They got divorced. <laughs> was it over the herpes? I think it was over him probably having twelve gay lovers. I, I was going to say I, that. I, yeah, I, I yeah, was, yeah. It's probably about his. Um, yeah, he had his some sexuality. Extra, he, was, he had some extracurricular stuff, and God, we love that. We love that. Love, we embrace that. But they were a really Fully. cute couple. They were a really cute couple. And hey, what you know, being being single, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you like a gay partner right now? I would love it. Right. I would love it. You'd have a great time together. No pressure, no sex. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this because our son Jack is always like up my ass about this stuff, but I was the original gay, you know, icon in Canada. I I gravitate towards gay men. I love gay men. You were an F-hag. Well, yeah, we're not allowed. For sure, we're not allowed to say that. We can't say that word anymore, but you were an F-hag. They're in my DNA. I absolutely adore it. So David Guest and I could check up anytime, but he might be dead. Okay, so that's the first thing. We're not sure. Yeah, Google. (laughs) <laughs> okay, so the second thing is what we're going to do is we're going to try and find me a man. Yes, yes. I think that is a, a big part of the show. We need to get Mary Jo uh, a man or yes. a woman or a woman. No, it's, no. You know, you're not thinking about fluidity now? With, no, with, no, I'm know, not everything. fluid. I'm not, not fluid. fluid. No, no I, I'm not a lesbian, sorry. And uh, hey, knock yourself out. Just not, 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 not my jam. No, right. Jack suggested it many times. He said I should widen my pool. Um, well, that's hey, we, he, yeah, I you know I might I might agree with them. All right, as my friend Maria had a few su- um, suggestions too. Okay, well, so we've got. Suge- a, can you she, talk about those now, or we'll talk about that later? Well, well, I'll run it by you and see, okay. and then we'll we'll talk okay, about it. Okay, we'll, maybe we'll put it in the show. Maybe we'll put it in the show. So that's our premise: positivity, going through the steps. Mm-hmm. Now we've done something called the twelve step program for reconnecting with your ex, and it's twelve yes. steps, and I'm really excited about it, and. Um, some are going to be a bit controversial that we're doing a little bit, a little That's, bit, but we, was that controversial with the O or a U either, whatever works. Right. Okay. I'm not, I'm not sure about our listener. So <laughs> <laughs> how Listen they're going to feel about that. So when we come back for our second podcast of X's and uh O's, um, we are going to, the, our first step is a moment of truth. The inciting. Yes incident was this brewing was it sudden how did it all go down how did it start i i like you i like your notes here new and improved model trading up trading down yeah Yeah. lateral move there's lots of questions lots of new zip code yes new zip code we love that lots Um, of things and and honestly and authentically and so we're going to go through these 12 steps this is going to be like the trajectory of our podcast so we'll do our like inaugural we'll do the steps and then we'll do an extra and then when we have millions of viewers we will do another 92,000 or so. Yeah. Yeah. Podcasts. And then we'll go on tour. We'll get a tour yeah. bus. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then at the end, let's, let's say in five years, this is a huge hit. Then we'll re- get remarried just for the show. For the show. Just yeah. for the show. Yeah. Anything yeah. for the show. You <laughs> will do anything for the show. <laughs> you could be sister wives. Yes, Sister I was going to say, we'd have to go to Utah. We'll get married in Utah. Oh, my God. That's a show, yeah. Tori and I and that, you. Okay, let me write that okay, down. Okay, yeah, Tori I'm gonna, and MJ. I'm, I'm going to write that down. So, you know, to wrap it up, like our um, our our heart and soul of this show is to be honest. And, yes. you know, uh, life is long. So let's um, let's try and find some joy and happiness where we can. Mm-hmm. And I think we're both interested. And I'm also interested in... Um, you know, if our listener, the, um, that you hear it from us and the voices yeah. that we've been betrayed to have are not really true. Um, yeah. So, yeah. We'd like to clear the air about a few things as well. Right. Yeah. Clear yeah. the air and, and join us for a fun ride. And, yeah. you know, everything's not one dimensional and everything seems so one dimensional right now. So let's uh, let's get to the bottom of things. Have some fun. Learn a little shit as we go. Right. And have a giggle. A giggle. I think we're going to get a condom sponsor from this one. I oh just boy. feel it. I'm just thinking uh, condoms, liquor, um, yeah. makeovers, plastic yeah. surgeons, divorce lawyers. Yeah. it's Whatever we can get, what we're going to take it. It's going to be huge. Uh, okay. Yeah. I love it. Well, or, I really you know, enjoyed my- Herpy cream. You know, hey, there you go. Yeah, it's a anything. cream? 
I, it's a cream? I don't know. I, I don't have herpes. I I've never know. had I've, herpes. I've never, knock on wood. I, knock well, on that's wood. what happens when you don't have sex for 17 years. Right. Um, but that, okay. all, that may all change. So you have to be careful out there, MJ. And we'll talk Thank about you. that too, what you're using for um, birth control. <laughs> well, no, protection. <laughs> Come on. Who <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. That hurt. So that is our first episode, everyone. And MJ, uh, it was so great hanging out with you. And so fun. Uh, I'm looking forward to doing more and more of these. Me and, too. I, and, uh, should we leave? Should we leave everyone with our credo? Well, one I think one of our credos is don't remember. I mean, don't forget. Like you put a ring on it. At one point, you want it to be there. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So maybe yeah. we're going to so, circle back to the little. Yeah. Circle little? back to yeah. Circle back to where it all began. Yeah, I like that. So let's circle back to where it all began and let's move forward. I was going to say with love. As fast That's as we too, can. Is that, with, with, that sounded with like kindness, a haiku. With kindness. That sounded like a Hallmark card. With kindness. Move forward with it. kindness. All right. I love it. All right. Well, I'm the credo I had again. was, the credo I has, have was, uh, why is divorce so expensive? Because it's worth it. But I like the other one better. Let's, I mean, listen, let's go back throw, to the beginning to move already. forward with kindness. I love it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, MJ. I'll see you again soon, I guess. It was so fun. Yeah. I'll see you in the oh. other room. Okay, I'll see you in a minute. And everybody, remember, if you're going through a divorce, be nice to each other. That's our show. Thanks. Bye. Bye.